welcome to this uh, talk on heart disease avoiding stents and bypass surgery and medications to begin with i would like to know from dr jolly what is actually heart disease see heart disease means any disease which is affecting the heart we generally call it as heart disease it can be uh, from congenital disorders to usually in the adult it is heart attack or cardiac failure and everything comes under the heart disease actually when we are talking about uh, heart disease uh, usually it is a heart attack that comes to the mind of everyone what is it that you know a person can do to know whether he has any heart health problems see and usually uh, most of we are generally worried about the heart disease when we say it is a heart attack and cardiac arrest and sudden death and all so that is usually at, you know, occurs in older age or mainly in youngsters also nowadays we are uh, seeing youngsters even younger children also even uh, 17 years 19 years and all it is happening so how we can uh, know it is, uh, whether there is a possibility of heart attack is the checking the uh, first thing is whether they are obese or, or overweight more excess fat in the body next is any other disease which is predisposing especially diabetes uh, hypertension uh, dyslipidemia that all Uh, taken as um, uh, predisposing factors for heart attack and if you are a smoker or an alcoholic or any other drug abuse definitely the chance of getting an attack is high and even uh, there are medications which can increase the uh, the uh, which uh, increase the weight gain especially the psychiatric medicines so it can increase the uh, weight gain and that also can predispose you to heart attack then how can you find out it is early there are so many tests available like uh, ecg is there the ecg we can only in active disease is there or attack is there only we ecg will say show much of the change uh, but tmd is there that shows that uh, how much is the exercise tolerance of your heart how much work you can uh, when when the heart is becoming deficient in oxygen actually we are checking the nutrition uh, giving to the cardiac muscles when it is uh, the heart uh, muscles when they are not getting enough nutrition or oxygen then this changes happens the tcg changes and all it is an actually electrical conduction abnormality or the changes which is uh, recording as the ecg so if the heart uh, nerves is not getting that is actually this uh, specialized uh, uh, muscle cell itself it is called uh, cardiac perkinji fibers and uh, that is all the uh, complicated terms we can avoid and if they are not getting enough nutrition they will show the change that is actually we are recording as the ecg and stress ecg the treadmill test and all then there are so many other parameters which you can check in the blood itself like uh, troponin that is actually if the cardiac uh, muscle is damaged then the some certain chemicals comes out that is uh, troponin is one of the component actually it is a component of the uh, cardiac muscle itself it is uh, oozing out so if there is a uh, troponin is positive there is definitely there is a chance that uh, if you had a pain or even you, you definitely it is you, you will also definitely understand that it is a attack or you may not be having any pain or anything but as a pre, uh, as a test you are doing as a health check up as a part of the health check up you are assessing your heart rate if it is uh, positive that definitely shows it is a positive and also there is plaque test actually that is a the activity of the this uh, fat deposits that is atherosclerosis inside the blood 
uh, inside the blood there will be fat deposits and it is called atherosclerosis and uh, how active it is you can assess with the plaque test actually and there are other vascular markers like uh, CRP especially high sensitivity CRP that is uh, C, C reactive protein so that also if it is positive that definitely shows that it is uh, uh, your cardiac risk is high. and uh, the basic thing this, this uh, lipid profile if the cholesterol uh, more than that actually the triglyceride level is more uh, damaging actually nowadays we are more importance giving for the triglycerides and that HDL previously more importance was given for actually uh, total cholesterol and the LDL now if the HDL is low and the triglyceride is so high that is more significant and because now everyone is taking uh, statins so if the, you are taking statin definitely your uh, uh, body is not making enough uh, cholesterol the cholesterol level can be low that doesn't mean you are safe the, the, if you are taking uh, statin and the cholesterol level is low that doesn't shows that the cardiac safety is there uh, but if the triglyceride is uh, in that case also triglyceride is high and the HDL is low you should definitely take it as a risk factor and also there are other factors like uh, the CAMD that is uh, coronary uh, car uh, carotid artery intima media thickness that is uh, you are assessing the how much uh, fat is uh, deposited inside the blood vessels that you can assess at the neck actually neck vessel that is supplying the brain so that is a direct indication for the uh, especially for the brain chances of spray stroke and all also we can uh, actually it is a representation of all blood vessels in your body but definitely to the especially to the brain so the stroke uh, chance also can be assessed with that and uh, now other tests like uh, angioplasty is uh, angiogram is there angiogram can be previously we are always saying the inversive PCA test was well, percutaneous coronary angiogram was doing now there is a CT angiogram and MR angiogram and all is coming up with the less uh, uh, inversive and again that um, um, this ultrasound uh, echocardiogram that also give an understanding about the cardiac health. so there are many uh, methods are there so we don't have to nowadays we don't have to go for uh, many inversive techniques like uh, angiogram and all for uh, assessing cardiac health actually uh, when uh, anyone is uh, suspected of uh, heart attack then an ECG is taken and then an angiogram is sometimes taken and uh, then it progresses to uh, some decision on based on that angiogram and this uh, ECG and all that but usually uh, when is an angioplasty needed and uh, how soon after an angiogram if you have a, a, a heart pain then you are going to a hospital then definitely they will immediately take an ECG if the ECG is taken it can be uh, if there is a definitive change that is called ST segment elevation if the ST segment elevation is there previously what we have done is actually to uh, give a clot lysing injection actually to there will be definitely there is ECG uh, elevation is there there can be a clot in the coronary artery immediately give an injection to lyse it that was the treatment but nowadays uh, there are um, so much of uh, hospitals with the facility for angioplasty if the hospital has a facility for angiography nowadays they take you for a primary angioplasty angiogram and angioplasty so if there is a uh, do an angiogram and do if there is a block put an extender that is the if it is a position it is a if it is possible to put up standard if the blood vessels are very calcified and there are calcified plaques and all 
the doctor may not be able to put a stent. A stent is an actually it's a uh, steel wire sort of thing which is inserted into the with the with the catheter it is inserted into the uh, the narrowed blood vessel. But actually it is not actually uh, not doing much great thing. So it can only uh, just to push the fat content that is uh, that is actually fat atherosclerosis that is actually fat um, small small fat swellings actually so this tent is actually it's a metallic thing and it is actually inserted so it will be pushing that uh, this thing go further uh, out and uh, making a way inside where the blood can flow that is the only thing which is done on during a cell it can be done as a primary stent or uh, this is uh, or, uh, and also it is uh, done uh, first uh, angiogram is done then if the doctor is finding there is a complication usually nowadays if there is a problem then only you put it for another time for a putting a stent then that is in an emergency situation you had a heart pain and going into the hospital next is a situation where you are going for a uh, health checkup and your TMD is positive then also next is usually if it is a cardiology unit they will uh, definitely ask for or a hospital setup they will ask for a uh, angiogram and the uh, usual st uh, trend is to put the stent if it is possible or if it, it the position is not correct and you cannot put a st doctor cannot put a stent there then they will ask for a cardiologist they will refer to cardiothoracic surgeon and uh, look for the bypass surgery that is the trend actually now the fc every day every they think there will be trends in the treatment also it is changing all the time it is not the uh, 10 uh, 10 years uh, back it may be in a different way currently this is the situation especially it all depends on the facilities available there the type of hospital then the type of doctors and the facility available also actually when we are uh, talking about this uh, angioplasty uh, sometimes uh, the patients are uh, referred for uh, bypass surgery uh, often we hear that uh, this uh, bypass surgery post bypass surgery the patients are supposed to do some sort of cardiac rehabilitation and uh, if you really go through that cardiac rehabilitation plan you will see like you know that person has to totally change his or her lifestyle uh, totally everything food movement activity sleep everything is more or less uh, lifestyle change. At the same time, it is said that those who have undergone a bypass surgery are at more risk to have further heart problems, etc. How does this go with uh, uh, the general possibility of correcting lifestyle? and is it possible to avoid this bypass surgery itself see first thing you should everyone should understand is the basic reason for the heart problem or the heart attack or the block and there is the uh, problem with the lifestyle it's a lifestyle disease it is internationally who and everyone is accepted that the heart disease, the heart this our uh, the sort of cardiac problems are because of the lifestyle factors. It's a lifestyle disease. It is not due to lack of medication or bypass surgery or stent. There's no the disease is coming not because of any of these factors. Yeah, it is not because you are not taking aspirin or you are not taking a, st um, uh, a statin or none of these factors is there for the causation of the disease. So cause is actually under the, lying in the lifestyle. 
so the real uh, correction what you had to do is the lifestyle correction but instead of that because that you had to put some effort but everyone wants you know, someone want to do the uh, do the effort you do the patient doesn't want to take any effort give it to the doctor so doctor what doctor you can do is doctor is doing there are three type of cardiac uh, doctors treating cardiac problems one is doctor is giving medicines there are other type of doctors give medicine only no surgery maybe in kerala in our part there are many at least few doctors who are treating only medicine day so those who doesn't want to go for surgery they can go to the doctor and there are other cardiology unit hospital based basically major hospital based is always with the uh, interventional cardiology they are actually putting that is the stent so you can put a stent and some cases stent may not be possible only when the stent is uh, not uh, effective or possible then go for the cardiothoracic surgeon who is doing a bypass surgery so in latest actually i think not least uh, there are few many studies it is coming out with a large number of patients actually it shows that even if you do the medi- medicine the actually three groups they are comparing the three groups those with the medicine those with the surgery and those with the stent see everyone those who are putting the stent definitely has to continue with the medicines and also the those who are undergoing uh, bypass also are continuing with the st- medicines all the three groups uh, there is only or one place only medicine only the other is stent and medicine and the other is bypass and medicine but the long term at least 5 to 10 years long term studies shows that the death due to an attack is the same for every all the three the question is then why this bypass why you put the stent why don't you go the medicine alone this all the three groups should do the lifestyle correction also so the basic reason for this heart attack and uh, cardiac arrest and death is the lifestyle so if you can correct the lifestyle then you don't need any of these things i'm uh, saying it because i am giving clinically supported and monitored lifestyle correction see in the clinically supported and monitored lifestyle correction the people coming for all this category those who are uh, tmd positive they are asked for a angiogram and they don't want to go for an angiogram and uh, they want to try to correction with the uh, clinical uh, this lifestyle correction and there are other people who has already undergone one or two uh, uh, standing by uh, um, uh, already had a uh, angioplasty or uh, balloon angioplasty and few stand but they have the continuing problem and they are asked for a bypass they don't they want to try other methods and there are other people who has already undergone a bypass many many stent and the bypass and there is nothing left and they are uh, really in difficulty they cannot do the basic daily activities even on uh, not on the job but uh, with the self management they are not able to do because of this angina and pain i had seen all the uh, given uh, treatment for all most all this type of different category of cardiac patient that's the most common so what the, uh, another common feature for all these patients are they will not be they will be having uh, diabetes hypertension or dyslipidemia and they will be taking all the medication for all these things the diabetes there may be two three medicines and insulin will be there for the bp there will be three four medicines or maybe it just depends the number is different for each patient so no patient will be common the same it's a, everyone will be having other diseases 
I mean, um, everyone will be taking, definitely statin they will be taking and also blood thinners they will be taking. Aspirin, clopidogrel, depends on this. And they may be having a prostate problem or um, uh, 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 intestinal problems. Multiple problems will be there. See, if you are giving med medication for all these things, we have to take multiple medicines. And even is this aspirin and all, it will be gas, it will be producing so much of trouble in the stomach because we are eating for, no, not for five. There are, I have seen, yeah, up to 30 tablets a day, people on and all. So if you are taking all these medicine, your stomach will be, and intestine will be in trouble. So there will be in the multiple way they will be suffering. This aspirin and all, everyone knows that acidity can occur. So, you will be taking an anti-acidity medicine also along with that. So, the number of medicines will be increasing. In what is done in the clinically supported lifestyle correction, they will be, yeah, they are assuring the correct nutrition for each person and mild exercises which can be done in a lying down or sitting position. So, even the cardiac patient who is having angina also can do it or even having an unstable angina people also can do it. So, we are seeing that such patients also and say unstable angina, even in the extent that they cannot even, it is, uh, they had to put tablet under the uh, sublingual tablets, they had to use even to go for the uh, 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 defecation or the toilet necessities they had to, because they cannot tolerate that much uh, effort also. So, such patients also we are seeing. And even all these patients, the, uh, it is all type 2 diabetes. Usually most of these patients will be type 2 diabetes. So in this uh, clinically supported lifestyle curriculum, we can stop all the diabetic medicines initially itself because we don't have to worry to stop the diabetic medicine because you can check the blood sugar next to two hours itself and you can see it is coming down. Because it is used in diabetic patients, a low calorie, low carbohydrate diet is used for those. So, all these patients would be obese or excess fat will be there in their body. So, low calorie and low carbohydrate diet and with all the nutrition, definitely the blood sugar will come down. Within two hours itself, you can see the results. So, without fear, we can stop the uh, insulin and diabetic medicine and uh, if the patient is following correctly within 24 hours the blood sugar will be normal without any medicine and we will check the HbA1c that is usually checked in once in three months we after two one week itself within in a week HbA1c also will be getting corrected because you are giving correct nutrition and you are damaged blood vessel as the HbA1c shows the damaged uh, uh, RBCs, red blood cells, hemoglobin, damaged hemoglobin, it is actually so that if the HbA1c is uh, 10 or 12, it means then 12 percent of your cell is damaged. It's a represent, it is actually checking in the RBCs, but it is representing all the cells. The protein in your cell is protein, uh, glycosylation, uh, the uh, sugar is damaging that much of cells. 10% of the cell and I had seen even 15 and 16% uh, HbA1c people I had seen actually. So depends on the patient how uh, stick, uh, they are sticking to the lifestyle correction and their age also and their capacity to regenerate the damaged cell to new cells. It will come down very fast. Some people uh, within a week one unit if, um, if it is uh, 12 it can come down to 10.5 within a week itself. That fast result will be there. That's all happening because we are with this, uh, we are giving correct nutrition for the body to repair the, uh, um, remove the damage cell and repair the uh, body itself, the organs itself. And the result, uh, the uh, uh, symptomatic relief, uh, that is the first important thing. Within a week itself, they will be having uh, drug, uh, so marked symptomatic relief will be there. 
and other medications like hypertension uh, cholesterol uh, blood thinness and all we can uh, reduce according to the reports blood you can bp you can check at home and be, when the bp is coming down you have to reduce the medicine otherwise you will get uh, giddiness and all because a normal person taking all three four bp medicines they will bp will go low so bp when come down or which with medicines will be tapered up within a month the most of the medicines will be stopped and uh, blood thinness also we can uh, reduce even uh, aspirin clopidogrel uh, when the uh, cholesterol is uh, normal you can reduce uh, by gradually so, other only the diabetic medicine is stopped abruptly but all the other medicine gradually the cholesterol medicine you cannot stop abruptly it has to be tapered off bp medicine just be tapered off usually almost all the medicines can be tapered off within a month only exception is uh, this if the patient had a recent uh, or within a month within a year they had a stent uh, insertion then you have they have to wait till one year even after bypass surgery i had seen patients uh, who has come after three or four months after bypass surgery and uh, th those patients also we can stop the uh, this uh, blood thinness and all if all the other parameters are coming down to normal so the real uh, it also shows that the real cause is this uh, lifestyle factors how much toxin in your body how much uh, new, uh, nutrient you are not getting or uh, whether there is enough nutrient is there and also the exercise if you take food also if you don't exercise it will not uh, if we are only when you are uh, doing the activity the blood circulation will increase so when the blood circulation is increased the toxins will be taken away and also the nutrient is reaching your cells and getting corrected it's very simple actually the thing is very simple but we are actually complicating it with so many medications so many complications uh, complicated surgeries actually you can solve these problems by simply only thing you should be having a willingness for making changes in your lifestyle regarding uh, heart health uh, one of the common general assumptions is that uh, aspirin and uh, statins and all if taken regularly they will take care of your heart much more than anything else what is the real picture see the statin is what is the function of uh, what is actually statin do statin actually blocking the production of cholesterol usually cardiac patients will be having a high cholesterol level so we think that if you reduce the cholesterol level it may be helping the heart that is the one uh, that is the thinking we have started this uh, using the statin and statin when it is blocking actually it is not for the cholesterol is needed for all the many many functions actually this uh, cell Re, uh, cell wall actually cellular integrity is actually there are even the all the membranes all the cell not only the cell the organelles also that wall is the uh, integrity is given by the cholesterol so it is very important for each cell for the to have cholesterol even the uh, removing and rebuilding new the damaged cell and uh, bringing new cells cholesterol is needed and also it is sex hormones it is made from the cholesterol when vitamin d you are producing it from cholesterol when the mineral or corticoid that is actually controlling our bp mechanism bp control and everything is is depends on the mineral or corticoid that is made of cholesterol from the cholesterol only and another thing is steroids that is actually the stress hormone when you have under stress actually the uh, um, this stress hormone steroids are protecting you even we all know that uh, during this uh, covid situation 
when a severe covid situation comes the only life saving is the steroid so even a small stress even a bacterial infection every very thing this stress, steroid hormone also is important so you are blocking all the production there is you are looking into the heart alone and the atherosclerosis and alone and the only you are looking into the value of the cholesterol but cholesterol is needed for all these things if there is a block in the production of any of this material this essential things for the body this cholesterol level will go high so it's a this heart disease is a part of the metabolic syndrome so heart disease is not coming as a heart disease alone it is not ending up coming as a heart block actually it is coming as an obesity diabetes hypertension dyslipidemia this excess comments um, triglycerides in the body see only after that this heart attack you are reaching so there is a metabolic problem that is metabolic problem means is a book our body or our the cell at a cellular level it's a chemical factory our body is basically a chemical factory it's a conglomeration actually of around uh, five uh, five Uh, 50 trillion cells so it's all in a, in a systematic way they are functioning so there is a block in this uh, chemical reaction that is why these things are increasing cholesterol is increasing previously actually we are uh, even the metabolic syndrome the uh, cholesterol and the hdl uh, uh, cholesterol and uh, ldl level was given importance but now it is changing now this uh, triglyceride and hdl level that is uh, given more importance so it is actually the amount of cholesterol in your blood or the fat deposited in your blood vessels that is actually more important to remove that yeah, just blocking the um, uh, cholesterol synthesis or uh, imp- improving the cholesterol excretion or things is not that is a manual thinking it logically there is not much there are cardiology associations and many things actually all these standards has kept by the cardiology associations and other pharma uh, this matter of manufacturers actually so but when you clearly logically thinking it is actually in the other way so it is not good definitely the high cholesterol is not good definitely you have to bring very high cholesterol is not good that means cholesterol means the high cholesterol means there is a metabolic block that is creating sort of um, uh, problems in your body your metabolic process is uh, getting um, stuck and all so that has to be corrected but not with the medicine actually you have to do exercise you have to do the correct your lifestyle your exercise your uh, food in day that level you have to correct it not by uh, medication even uh, when you come to the blood thinness that is the other thing which is uh, commonly used aspirin clopidogrel there are all cheap medicines usually everyone get it free because of the insurance it is good. even if you had to po- uh, pay from the pocket or it is very small cost so just uh, you are just for a satisfaction you are taking one aspirin every day so you think that it is everything will be correct actually what is the action of the aspirin aspirin is a anti platelet medicine and clopidogrel all these things are anti platelet what is the function of a platelet platelet is actually protecting from us from bleeding internal bleeding or external bleeding this now those heart patients are all most of the heart patients are uh, hypertensive and taking anti hypertensive medicine also anti hypertensive medicine is a contraindication for taking blood thinners actually why because hypertensive patients can get a, a small bleeds inside the brain and all because of the pressure and the damage to the blood vessel small bleeds can there so if you are on aspirin that if you are not on any and blood thinner 
it will body has the mechanism there will, uh, this uh, platelet will blow there and seal it but you are inactivating the platelet by giving this medicine actually when a platelet is being formed if the aspirin presence is there they will inactivate its the clotting uh, the efficiency of the, uh, the main function of the platelet is to uh, make a blood clot actually so you are actually it is just stopping and it is actually suicidal almost uh, uh, seven days is the life seven to ten days is the lifespan of a platelet and if the it is exposed during the time of uh, its production you are actually it is born, made in the bone marrow in your bone marrow and the bone marrow is exposed to that and the enough is there that uh, platelet is uh, inactivated so platelet will not do its function so just imagine a hypertensive patient and is uh, having a small bleed and uh, the platelet is inactivated and the bleeding uh, the patch can not be cannot pass the uh, bleeding vessel it can go into a hemorrhage and it can go into a stroke that is the risk and it is much more uh, the risk is higher when you are young and you are active like riding a bicycle or even you are driving a car there is always a chance for a hit or a shake and everything or even just walking you can fall down if you hit your head your chance of getting an internal bleeding is high and you, you may be going and uh, checking the immediately if, if you take a uh, brain scan also it will, the bleeding may not be there it will be developing gradually gradually developing and uh, it will that uh, actually recently we had a very famous personality in indian personality who had a uh, subdural hematoma the subdural hematoma means that uh, under the skull the blood was collected under the skull he was he was very active man around say, 60 plus person even using bicycle riding bicycle and all he was using this medicine and he had a headache and he is taking along with the aspirin he is taking the medicine for the headache and if a um, person who is taking aspirin and this blood thinners and, and uh, taking again with uh, um, this sort of um, uh, NSAID group of medicines for the pain and all this bleeding tendency will be even higher so finally he ended up in a, a subdural hematoma damaging uh, leading to a so sort of stroke and, but saved by surgery but we are always think saved by the surgery and everything but we should also remember that if you are not taking such medicine you have not ended up in such problems at all it is actually a side effect of the uh, blood thinner and why, why you are taking the blood thinner it is just to protect the heart but if you are protecting the heart but you are troubling the brain and other organs even the aspirin this sort of medicines can create uh, gastric problems and internal bleeding and so many other side effects can occur so that we should always remember that when you are doing um, taking a medicine you are compromising somewhere you are doing a surgery you are definitely there is no surgery uh, without any complication there is definitely complication uh, surgery associated complication and the uh, anesthesia associated complication and also after surgery you should have to take antibiotic and so many medicines also so as associated with that medication also you will be having so you don't get anything free so you had to do the your work and uh, do lifestyle correction you are not willing for that that is why you are going for the basically this lifestyle disease oriented surgeries and medication is just because you are not willing for your lifestyle correction in a proper way may not be because you don't know you might have tried but with uh, so many medicines if you are on you will not be able to do it properly uh, you may not be able to because of the hunger this uh, acidity problems and all you may not be able to do the uh, uh, food control and all but it is possible definitely if you are in a systematic way if you are going because i have experience in giving uh, clinically supported lifestyle correction all these patients can uh, diabetic patients bp patients and all can come out of it 
within a um, medication from within a month provided is type 2 diabetes it is it can come out of my medicines and surgery my medicines and insulin from the diabetic medicine and also bp medicines uh, aspirin and everything only thing if you have stent and or put it already stent is there then you have to uh, till that the stent is covered by the normal tissue otherwise it is exposing for the clot formation on the stent but within a month usually maybe within three months or six months uh, it will be covered by the normal our own epithelial growth but we take it for the uh, safety we uh, take it for one year take uh, uh, this blood thinness actually when we are talking about this uh, blocks in heart vessels uh, usually what comes in mind is this cholesterol that is some sort of fat uh, gets deposited inside the walls of the blood vessels uh, but we hear that uh, that a better way of understanding the seriousness of the blocks is to know about the level of uh, calcium deposits within the walls of the blood vessels what is it that a common man should understand and in what way can he address this issue of preventing development of this cholesterol deposits or calcium deposits or both or whatever way is possible see basically these problems are inflammatory in nature the inflammation means if you have a cut on your skin or a, a bruise you get uh, some edema pain and all so your blood vessel is getting damaged why your blood vessel is getting damaged with this atherosclerosis is fat deposition because there is so much of excess fat is running in in your uh, through the your blood vessels why because there is your fat cells are saying if there is excess fat it has to be stored in the fat cells actually so your fat cells are saying we i won't take you the when you take you uh, this carbohydrate that is it will be digested into glucose and excess glucose is there the liver will convert into fat triglyceride that is one of the lipid profile parameter we are checking the liver will convert into triglyceride and send it to deposit inside the uh, to store storehouse that is our fat cells but when the stage is reached the fat cells will say no i don't know i accept anything we don't have space to so go away go away and then what will happen there is no place to go so they will be just circulating inside the blood and when the, the blood is also filled with the, this uh, uh, triglyceride they will the liver cells itself will be get enlarged with the fat that is called fatty liver all these patients will be having fatty liver and all of different levels fatty liver 1 2 uh, grade 1 2 or 3 or even going into fibrosis if you do a fibro scan there will be fibrosis also so that will be the situation of all these patients actually so this excess fat which is traveling like uh, during the covid time those no one want uh, this uh, petrol and uh, our uh, mineral oils so the all the uh, ships were uh, circulating inside the sea itself just like that it's a Uh, when the uh, petrol is not needed for anyone the petrol uh, uh, ships were uh, running inside the uh, is, uh, surface of the sea just like this uh, uh, excess fat is also running inside the blood vessels and they find some place to deposit and they find uh, deposited inside the blood vessels itself so the so the when the blood vessels is uh, um, da, uh, uh, this fat is uh, deposited there 
the inflammation it is normal it is not normal so the our immune system will recognize it they want to remove it this step that is the inflammation starts when the inflammation starts if the fat also has different type of fat is there this omega 6 and omega 3 that is actually controlling inflammation if the what we eat actually in our cooking oils and all yeah, and nuts is uh, uh, badam pista cashew nut everything is uh, very high omega 6 is there and omega 3 that is actually the uh, healing part that is actually low in our food we all know that heart patients is good to take uh, uh, the sardine or the salmon it is very good omega 3 oil we take it that is actually the healing oil that is uh, helping the regeneration the omega 6 is the defense they want to remove the toxin removal that is the defensive so this defense activity is uh, more in this uh, vessels and because of the inflammation calcium deposit also comes the fat deposit is there and along with the calcium also deposit calcium is also again deposited the stretchability of the blood vessel is reducing the blood vessel when the heart is pumping there is a natural the, the blood vessels to be pliable so it should accommodate the excess uh, blood pumped but the blood vessel is stiff the, that is why the high pressure is increasing because the tension on the blood vessel will increase that is actually the tension which is created by the pumping of the heart is called blood pressure so it is increasing so when the calcification is there even it is more even more increasing you are checking the calcium calcium scan and uh, all with the heart alone but it is happening not only in the heart the whole body that blood vessel are hardening so blood vessel is hardening and the bp is uh, going high and your uh, left ventricle that uh, left part of the heart that is pumping to the body is thickening that the muscle has to if you want to do more work more muscle because if you are uh, doing weight lifting your biceps will uh, start uh, increasing no we want to have a big biceps but just like that when the heart is doing more work the heart muscles are uh, growing and they need more blood but the blood vessel supply in the coronary artery is already blocked there is all deposits it's already the it is not able to dilate because of the calcification the fat is deposited there then the that is the reason for uh, this hypertensive patients getting a uh, heart attack because there is narrow blood vessels more muscle and heart has to do more work so only way to get out of it is uh, reduce the fat in the blood uh, for reducing the fat in the blood you had to reduce your food calorie intake you had to reduce and uh, Uh, reduce the workload of the heart even the fat deposited as a uh, obesity in your body is actually increasing the workload of the heart so that way you had to uh, uh, start from the root cause actually in uh, other uh, actually you had to correct the root cause but what we are doing is only on the peripheral level you are putting a stent a small spring inside the end. doing a bypass taking some blood vessel from a other place and putting it into the heart so that is actually you are actually you are what you are not addressing the real problem actually when we are talking about this heart problems heart health uh, commonly it is believed that uh, stress is a important trigger in uh, damaging the heart or creating a heart attack what is the way in which stress can be a part of this and how is it that it can be managed to prevent occurrence of such a heart damage see stress and hypertension and heart disease all goes together and also obesity 
see stress is the actually where the tension for it we, we, we stress in another way we say is tension the other way the about the blood pressure we are saying it is hypertension that is actually hypertension means it is the inside the blood vessel with the uh, blood inserting on the your blood vessel the other stress is actually shows that the stress inside your nervous system but the stress means may not be because of the external factors you will be always stress to people or anxiety people and this tension tension batch we always call some i mean to he is a tension person so this is actually shows that there is some mechanisms inside your nervous system it is actually uh, under stress actually it is not your stress is representing your nervous system stress actually so when a stress real situation the stress means if you are uh, i mean facing a uh, risky situation or a uh, problem you had to run away or you had to facing death or something like that injury or something then there is a lot of hormonal changes which is happening inside that is all controlled by this uh, usually adrenal hormones adrenaline is there and also this uh, mineral corticoid aldosterone that is actually controlling your pressure you had to your pressure has to increase if you had to fight for something if you are we were in our natural way you are in a forest or a, a paleolithic era it is actually you are fighting with the animals or the lion or the elephant you are running away or something like that but now we are in a different way that uh, job stress you have to to have the target you are not able to Uh, meet the target or if you are not able to meet the target you your earnings will be affected so so much of stress and also the family stress uh, with the husband wife children so many stress we can we have to face so all these circumstances there is this hormones are coming out so these hormones are actually uh, and the um, mediators in the brain they are actually representing the stress when the this all the previously i had told that all this uh, stress hormones mineral uh, bp controlling hormones all are made from the uh, cholesterol also so naturally the cholesterol will go high when you have cholesterol uh, stress is that your cholesterol will high and also many people when they are stressed they will find the solace in eating extra food so that is the only way out for many people uh, because you are not doing exercise actually if you are doing exercise and you are keeping your system correct this hormonal balance and everything can be corrected but here you are not doing um, uh, physical activity physical activity means when you are uh, activating your muscles so you can physical activity you means you are doing acting ex uh, uh, voluntarily acting your uh, making the your skeletal muscles to do work skeletal muscle is attached to the bones when you are activating this muscle there are certain hormones coming out from that chemicals actually myokines and also osteoblast osteoclastin and so many things are coming out and actually that has an imp- impact on the brain also and all the systems in the, in the body so this exercise is not there you are overeating and your cholesterol is they are uh, triglyceride is going high naturally you need more uh, so many of hormones is there so for production of that hormones you need cholesterol so the cholesterol is going high actually cholesterol is made by your body not mainly from the food the cholesterol is only in the animal foods actually if it's a vegetarian or vegetarians also have high cholesterol that means it is not coming from food directly actually it is coming from the uh, your body is making more cholesterol because your body is needing it so this way this whole metabolic process is getting affected
that is the reason so you had to understand that the correct the basic problem you had to uh, address the basic problem actually actually it is said that uh, diabetic patients have double the possibility of having uh, heart uh, attack and uh, associated problems so in such a circumstance what is it that uh, diabetic patients should look into to protect their heart or improve their heart health diabetes diabetic patients should understand one thing first it's a lifestyle disease it's not because of anything it is how you maintain your body you are not doing exercise you are eating more diabetes means it is excess sugar in the body that's all there's nothing more than that that means what it, what it means by sugar will not uh, just uh, will not come from anywhere only from your food the sugar can come this glucose when you are eating carbohydrate it will digest into and uh, split into glucose and it will get absorbed into the system and it will comes to the first come to the liver and the excess glucose is converted into uh, glycogen that is easy uh, easy, easy uh, making for the easy uh, making of the glucose the some amount of glycogen almost to uh, 750 to 5 uh, 1 kg of glycogen will be there that when it is needed it is uh, converted into glucose and it releasing into so storehouse of carbohydrate itself next is only that much one uh, kg maximum one percent only is, uh, in the stored carbohydrate is stored in our body the excess is made into fat so that is also liver is doing it and sending it to the fat uh, fat cells to store it but when the for, for the diabetic patient this the uh, liver is not able to make the excess glucose into fat and diabetic patients will be invariably most of the diabetic patient will be having high triglyceride also that is because the the fat cells is not accepting the uh, triglyceride and uh, even the insulin get insulin resistance come actually the Uh, insulin is the one pushing for this uh, production and also there is a deposition in the storage house that is in the fat cell so, so 90% of our diabetic patients are type 2 diabetic patients they don't have, there are uh, no deficiency of insulin many diabetic patients thinks that they, they have a deficiency of insulin that's why they are taking every uh, insulin injections actually this type 2 diabetes patients having a high especially those who are taking an insulin injection they will be invariably their insulin level also will be high we all know that any hormone which is down or up it is both this uh, harmful so diabetes uh, type 1 diabetes the insulin level is low you have to take insulin otherwise it is uh, you cannot survive without insulin is very uh insulin is a very important hormone for our metabolism and without uh, insulin you cannot survive so that is a boon actually where the uh, discovery of the insulin and especially with the latest development you can make the human insulin by bi- bi- biotechnology and it's all boon for us but we are mainly we are using it in the wrong purpose for the type 2 diabetes there's no insulin deficiency but you are injecting insulin so this insulin itself is creating trouble for you for uh, uh, not only for the heart disease and also for the uh, diabetic retinopathy diabetic uh, this alzheimer's disease and all yeah, actually latest studies shows that the high hyperinsulinemia is the problem is the, not only the, definitely the high glucose is a problem hyper uh, glycemia is a problem equally important is the hyperinsulin insulin is a problem so we had to come out of both so for coming out actually most of the diabetic medicines we are using is actually tablets also acting by increasing the insulin production 
actually we need uh, only totally, uh, four or five units of insulin in, in our blood actually per ml when we check the blood values actually but maximum we are telling is 25 24 depends on the lab but i have seen patient patients with more than 300 350 250 and all values with insulin what regularly on diabetic medicine and the insulin injection and uh, this insulin also is damaging but the uh, happy thing is actually if you are correcting the lifestyle you are doing the lifestyle correction this insulin level and all will come just like blood sugar level come far, uh, within uh, hours itself within 24 hours 48 hours you can correct the uh, blood level of glucose but within a week or two this uh, insulin level also will come down so even the pre-diabetic patients i had seen pre-diabetic patients not uh, already frank diabetic only hbr&c 5.7 but the insulin level is 300 up so they will be having this uh, black uh, discoloration this acanthosis nigricans and the uh, discoloration on the face neck and all so such people also, if you correct the uh, lifestyle with the correct nutrition, correct exercise and avoiding uh, control of calorie, you can bring down the insulin level also. So the diabetic patient, if they don't want to get into trouble, come out of diabetes and type 2 diabetes is 100% reversible. Only thing you have to, not with medicine, not with insulin, you cannot reverse the diabetes. But uh, you can reverse the diabetes with your lifestyle correction, with your effort. I think with that we come to the end of this uh, talk. Thank you.